here tonight, I just want to take a few moments of pause time. When I come up here, you said, are we sitting in the right places? And I said, yeah, we are. We're sitting in the right places. Uh, I wanted to take a moment. I want to read you uh, uh, somebody had sent me, I don't know, some kind of article here. I want to read that to you and then read some scripture that kind of goes along with it. Uh, and this is kind of how we need to live as a Christian. I, I'm not even sure who, uh, where this came from. But anyway, it says, I'm a Christian. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not shouting that I am clean living. I'm whispering that I was lost, but now I found forgiven. When I say that I'm a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need Christ to be my guide. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and need his strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and need God to clean my mess. When I say that I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the pain, the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches, so I call upon his name. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's good grace somehow. And, the, and I wanted to read tonight in Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning in the 9th verse. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up in the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee, and that I am not as other men are, extorters, unjust, adulterers, and even this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. As we sing number 388. I definitely think that somebody's made a mistake. <laughs> Dan asked me about a month ago if I'd bring up sunrise service. I said, so I'll think about it. So that was three weeks before sunrise service. And uh, so he asked me again the week before. I said, well, I'm still thinking. He said, well, you know, it's coming up. So I said, okay, I'll do it. But I guess all that time I was praying that something would happen and I wouldn't have to, to do it. But uh, uh, so it did, but I, and I got out of that. So, and I, I, I was talking to Eric and uh, Mark a couple weeks ago, and I told them, I said, you know, I, I guess I pulled that rope as hard as I can pull it. And I can't go any farther on that rope. <clears throat> uh, and I saw Emily the other day at the restaurant. She said, hey, you, you preaching Sunday night? And I said, well, I, I don't call it preaching. I, I, I call it I, I'm a spokesperson for God. I, I don't call myself a preacher. But, uh, you know, kind of ironic. When I was a teenager, I came to this church once, or a couple times, and I sat about the border, around where I guess where Sam sat, and my uncle and my aunt lived on the rovers of Frederick's farm, and I would come down and visit them. And I guess it's time. Uh, 
And I'm gonna lock the doors so when you get when you get started, you might want to leave. <laughs> but uh, turn to John chapter six. Uh, I just wonder if anybody's hungry tonight. If you if you've ate today, and uh, chapter six is going to lead into what I want to talk about. But uh, I think, I don't think we, be, we, we feed enough off of God's Word. Uh, we don't eat enough from it. We, we run through the Scriptures. We don't let it sink in. And uh, we want to let the natural man take over instead of the spiritual man. But starting with chapter 6 uh, in John, it says, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. It says, And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So they followed him because of the miracles that he did. Then Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. Now, a lot of people, if you don't know what the Passover is, but the Passover was celebrated on the evening of the 14th day of Abib, which is the month of Nisan. Some they pronounce it Nisan, but which is in our calendar, uh, March into April. You know, at the time of the bar, of barley harvest. And the Passover lamb was eaten in remembrance of the last meal eaten before they departed out of the land of Egypt. When Jesus then, verse 5 says, uh, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great mortal company coming to him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these... <clears throat> that these may eat. And this he said to prove him, he's talking about prove Philip here, uh, he said, and for he himself knew what he would do. Christ knew what he was going to do here, but he had to do this to prove to Philip. Now Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. So there was a lot of people there, but they had very little food. And a penny worth is like a 200-day wages in that day and time of the Darius. And uh, so there was a lot of wages to be spent for that type of crowd. Uh, and one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? You know, so he's saying here, how are we going to feed this amount of people with this little a bit of food that we have here? You know, it's such a small amount of food, but how are we going to take care of them? And Jesus saith, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. So how are you going to feed 5,000 men? That's not including the children and the women that were there. With five loaves of bread and two little fish. So Philip's asking this question. How, how are we going to feed these people? But Jesus knew what he had to do. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise, the fish, as much as they would. <clears throat> so he blessed the food, and he broke it, and he distributed it to all the people that were there. Those five loaves and those two little fish. And when they were filled... He said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments 
that remain that nothing be lost. You know, that kind of stuck with me. That, you know, that he wanted the fragments to be gathered back up. That he want, want, didn't want anything to be lost. You know, because he had blessed his food, it, it, it multiplied, and he distributed to the people. And he took back up what was left over. Our great nation that we live in today is one of the blessed nations that we have, that God in this universe has blessed us. But we are probably the most wasteful nation there is on earth. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. This is how much was left over after the people got to eat. Then those men, when they had seen the miracles that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that shall come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again to a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went, went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rolled about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh into the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. And if you notice, it didn't mention anything here about Peter. Matthew is the only book of the new, in the New Testament that speaks about Peter walking on the water of Christ. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately... The ship was at the land where they went. And that kind of hit me there too, that when he got into the ship, he was immediately at the land. And it didn't take any time there, but it was immediately there. And that's what the power of Christ has. You know, he can speak and he can be done. And the day following... When the people were st which stood on the other side, side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one or two his disciples were in it. And that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. So that the people knew that Christ didn't get into the ship with the disciples. But yet he, were, he was there with them. He says, How be it? There came either other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after the Lord had given thanks. So as you see, we're back to the bread here. And these people, they're still thinking natural. They're not thinking spiritual here. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took ship, shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence camest thou thither? So they asked him, how did you, hear, how did you get here? You didn't come in the boat with the, the disciples. So how did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves that were filled. And again, they're still thinking naturally here instead of the spiritual food that they should be eating. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man should give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So we need to be laboring 
for the meat that doesn't perish. The meat that Jesus Christ gives us, which is his word. And we need to take that, that word and eat it and grow with it. Number 28 says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Then said they therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Starting with verse 31 here, <clears throat> is where I really want to, to talk about the bread, which is the bread of life, not the natural bread that you keep getting hungry from. Your body gets worn down, and you've got to have something to nourish it. Just as the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they murmured constantly. They were never satisfied. They were never happy. They were always complaining. You know, that uh, they asked Moses, said, you bring us out here from the wilderness to die? So what are we going to eat? We have nothing to eat. So God sent them quail, and he also sent them something that was a word that was it's called manna. And I'm taking this out of Exodus 16, Chapter 16 says, manna literally means, what is it? That was the name for it. What is it? That's what it meant. It was remarkable for its size, shape, color, taste, and use. Its tremendous abundance. Its strange capacity for breeding worms. At the end of each day, except for the sixth day. Why did it breed worms each day? It's because they got more than they needed. Because they were greedy. So instead of them having extra that would carry over to the next day, God designed it or that it would spoil and have worms except for that sixth day that they couldn't do any labor on. That's why they could gather more and it would last. You know, it taught the people to look to God for their daily bread. And it pointed toward the one who is the true bread from heaven. Even the bread of life, Jesus Christ, is that bread that gives life. Jesus Christ, whom you and I serve, is that bread of life. And when we get hungry, we can go to Him. He feeds us. He nourishes our body. He takes care of us. Verse 31 says, And our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Exodus 16 15 says that this bread is from heaven. 32 says, Then said Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Who is that true bread? Jesus Christ is that true bread. For, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And they were still thinking natural here. They were still wanting natural food to eat because they had saw the miracles that he'd done in the past when he turned the bread and the five loaves into multitudes to feed them.
And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. The bread that gives life, Jesus speaks, spiritual and eternal. That's the bread that gives life. <clears throat> but I said unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. So they saw Christ, but they still didn't believe him. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Christ didn't come to do his will. He came to, to do God's will and to fulfill the things that were written of it and to fulfill the things that his God, his Father, wanted him to do. For you and I, that's why he did these things. And for the lost, for those that don't know him as their Savior, Christ suffered and died and bled for each and every one of us. And this... And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. You know, when uh, this kind of verse here kind of hit me with the verse that's in the, uh, earlier that we read, that he took up all the fragments that was left because he didn't want to lose anything. That's the same way you and I. He doesn't want to lose us. Verse 40 says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Everyone that believes in him, God will raise the last day, and he will have everlasting life. If you endure to the end, he said the same shall be saved. We've got to endure. Just so we accept Christ in our life, and that's it. We've got work to do. We have something to do that he has in store for us. We might run from it, as I tried to run years and years past, but it finally catches up with you. And we all have a job to do. As we spoke about it in Sunday school this morning. You know, whether it's singing, whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, whether it's preaching, we all have a work to do for Christ. And the Jews, then, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. So they didn't believe that he was this true bread. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? They're saying, Isn't this Joseph son? that grew up, that we know all of his life? How did he come down from heaven if he's Joseph's son? But they still didn't believe him. Because they knew that he was a carpenter. They knew what kind of work he was, if he did. Yes, he was a carpenter, but he was also the son of God. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be all taught of God. Every man therefore 
that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Isaiah 54 and 13 and Micah 4 and 2 says, It was foretold that Christ should teach them. That Christ should stand in the synagogues and preach his sermons to the people. To teach them his word. Teach them about him. Help them believe that he is the true Christ, the true bread. That once you taste of this bread and you eat of it, you're never hungry again. That number 46 says that not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Only Christ has seen the Father. Nobody here on this earth has seen the Father. Moses saw his tender parts on Mount Sinai, but no one has saw God face to face. But one day we will. Early, early, I say unto you, he that believeth on in me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Christ is saying, I am that bread that you desire to eat. I am that bread that you need. That, he is that bread that you and I need. We need strength from Jesus Christ. And we need strength from one another. We need to help bear one another's burdens. To lift one another up. When we're down the valley, we don't know which way to turn. We need one another to help us. And also Jesus Christ to look upon him for him. He says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and, and they are dead. They ate this natural food, and they all died in the wilderness. He's saying, telling them here over and over again, I am that bread you need. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Isn't that the bread that you need? That's the bread that we need to sustain us. <clears throat> he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give, and the bread that I give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. And he did. He gave his life for the world when he hung there on that cross for you and I. He gave his life, his flesh on that cross. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. If you, and if, if we eat that bread and drink of this cup, he says that we can live forever. <coughs> We've got to make a step to do that. We've got to accept him in our lives to be able to eat of that bread and drink of that cup that we take every Sunday morning. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us this, his flesh to eat? Their, mind, their eyes were blind. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. We can be walking around healthy as we think we can. But without Christ in our life, we're dead. Four says, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the, law, as, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me even he shall live by me. 
This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, I can't say it over enough that, you know, we have to eat his word. We have to feed off of his word. That's what makes us to grow stronger and closer to him each and every day. We're going to have struggles and trials in our life no matter what we do. But Christ is always there for us. As I've told, as I've, as I've told you about a man that can feed you, he can sustain you, he can keep you, he can make you whole, he can give you immortality by accepting him as your Savior. I've told you all these things about Christ. How much he loved you. How much he sacrificed for you. Not the natural man. But the spiritual man. That's what we need in our lives today. Is Jesus Christ. You can live a hundred years. But without Christ in your life. You haven't lived at all. Tonight, if you don't know Christ, you've heard the word, believe it, accept it, repent of your sins, be baptized in the water's grave, raised and walk in the newness of life. And that we can eat from God's table that he has prepared for those that love and serve him. As we stand the same, five and two. I want to welcome everybody.